<laughs> All right, it's time to get this garden walk on. Y'all ready? Let's do it. All right. It's taken many times for me to learn. I know this garden's where I want to grow. My life was like a seed of inhibition. But now I feel like a flower in the sun. All's been stripped away, I know for certain. That the life I want to live has just begun. My darling, I have drowned of you forever. I can't escape the truth of what I know. It's taken many times for me a tumbling. Know oh, this garden's where I want to grow. Good morning, y'all. Welcome morning. to Stivers Homestead. I'm Zach. And I'm Jen. And today is garden walk number five. Yep. <laughs> and oh my goodness. So last week, I think we said it was one of our biggest growths that we've had. This one is the biggest growth. And I'm pretty sure it's going to continue that trend every week we do this. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, we have a lot, a lot of fruit showing up everywhere. So we're really excited to show you all. But first, we're in matching shirts. Matching shirts. So we got Homestead and Hustle. They sent us some shirts along with some beautiful garden lights, which we'll show you in a minute. are magical. Um, we've got a few pictures that we'll add at the end of them in nighttime. They're so cool. So thank you all so much. Um, they have a homestead in Texas. Their motto is living on seed and feed. They're so cool. We have uh, gotten to know them a little bit. We hope to get to know them even more and more mm -hmm. and be in touch with them a lot and get talking to them. And uh, they have so much stuff going on their homestead. Check them out for sure. You will absolutely love them. Yeah, and uh, I really like their saying, living, living on feed and seed. Because um, if you think about it, everything starts with either feed for animals or seed as a plant. And so that's what they're basically saying. They're starting with that and that produces everything on their homestead is from feed and seed. So that's really cool. So we will pin uh, a comment down below with their link to their channel. If you want to go check them out, please do so. They're a really cool, uh, really cool family. So yeah. thank y'all for the shirts. They're awesome. <laughs> they have Instagram too. So check them out on Instagram too. Yeah, absolutely. And if you are new and you're like, what is all this? If someone sends us a shirt and uh, we like their channel, um, we will wear their shirts and promote them. Um, we definitely uh, love the community and we want to keep uh, spreading the word and sharing the love. So that's why we're in matching shirts. <laughs> All right, it's time to get this garden walk on. Y'all ready? Let's do it. All right. All right, first stop. My favorite spot in the garden. Oh, pool's growing too. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Look at these zinnias. They're really starting to bush out. Yes, like they are. Multiplying and getting bigger and it's like the prettiest thing in the world as soon as people enter this place. Look at that. Okay. It's just beautiful. Yep. Yeah. It's just a big old water trough full of zinnias blooming everywhere. And I love how it's doing it too. Like look, the back is like getting taller. So like when you come in, this is kind of the look that you have. So it's like we got these down here, like that's cool, we'll stay small and kind of bush out. And these in the back, like that's that's cool, we'll get taller so everybody can see us. Beautiful. All right, moving on, I guess. Over here. You can see that they're attaching and they're gonna grow right up our fence. We've got these in the 10 gallon grow bags. If you've never tried it, it does work. Um, they're doing really well. These are beautiful. Honestly, I'm not sure the variety because we got these uh, from two family and it was a mix of two different styles. So you had this style and this one, but this one's got a very beautiful purple leaf on it. All right, now to the tilled garden, which is really thriving. So as y'all can see here, I'll flip you around, give you a long shot, and then we'll look at it a little closer. So this is butternut squash, 
zucchini, Jen's chocolate mint, and then we got pumpkins and sunflowers over there. So Jen, you want to show them your, or your chocolate mint there? Yeah. Still doing well here in this grow bag. Every time we do this, I have to eat some, of yeah. course. Gosh, but it's good. I've got quite a few people that are wanting to take some of this home and grow it for themselves. So we're going to do some clippings and give them to a few people so they can love the chocolate mint as well because it is so good. Yeah, absolutely. And once it gets bigger, we'll have plenty to share out too because now that we know it can be shipped because an awesome follower sent it some to us, we'll make sure to do that once we have plenty to share. So then we got our butternut squash. You can see it just kind of vining out. We do not have these on a trellis. We uh, planted plenty of room. And the cool thing with these is you can really move them in the direction you want them to grow. So, so you can pick it up and move it however you want to. So that's kind of what I've been doing. So like this one you can see isn't doing so hot. So I'm kind of letting this guy take over his territory and then so on and so on with all of these. I'm just sending them in different directions. That way they don't tackle each other. So you can grow on the ground with till gardens. Where you at? Oh, we got some zucchini back here coming up. So that's exciting. Yeah. We'll be able to use them soon. Oh my God, I can't wait, y'all. I love these leaves. Yeah. They're so big. And we've got more pole beans. More pole beans. This one's really taking off over here. Yeah, this guy's already reached the top. I love how he twined around it. It's really cool. Which I moved him over there to see if he'll start going across since he's out of room on the top but it's really cool yeah we've just kind of got pole beans huh? wherever they fit see if I can get it. oh yeah we there got a is. blooms coming on pole beans soon here's another one of those purple pole beans they're attaching to i'm gonna move him up here but they're so pretty beautiful these so these are the sunflowers we've got velvet queens they're growing up and getting tall. There'll be no time for their towering over everything. And not all of the autumn beauties came up, but a few have. Um, they didn't have the best germination rate for some reason. And then we've got a couple of the purple comb flowers, which is echinacea, but not 100% germination on them either. So I'm not sure why the velvet queens are soaring, but they are. <laughs> <laughs> and then we've also got the Jack B. Little pumpkins. They're taking off like crazy. It's a really good little pumpkin to grow. And y'all, if everything seems just a tad wilted, we're shooting this bright and early in the morning just because it's cooler and it's nice and pretty. But also, it hit 45 degrees last night here. So that's not fun. So everything, we're really hoping that once the sun comes out and it gets really warm, it doesn't hurt anything. But that's why everything looks a little down. If you have thought about trying Jack B. Little pumpkins from Baker Creek or MI Gardener, we had a 100% germination rate. So it's a great little pumpkin to grow for your kids or your family or to sell. They're just those little like miniature kid sized pumpkins and you can paint them or dry them out and you can carve them. You can do anything with them. So. Yeah, eat them. Yeah, you can eat them, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we had a 100% germination rate on those. They're pretty awesome. Yeah, we're pretty excited about that. Those bad boys. And then we've got the Cherokee Tan Pumpkins. We planted six seeds of Cherokee Tan, which is the six seeds that Deep South Homestead and Crazy Days has sent us for the collaboration. And of the six, we had two that germinated. So, you know, I'm not disappointed in that. I think that's a pretty good rate. And honestly, I'm just happy that any of them did. So um, we're happy about that. We're really excited to grow them and hopefully they do well here. And these It'll are the ones. Mystery. Yeah, and these are the ones that survived the attack of Xena. Yeah. So they they were having a rough try at first, anyways. Yeah. So this is our tilled garden. It's our pumpkin patch, zucchini, squash, and sunflowers. Now to one of my favorite beds, the pepper bed. It is absolutely rocking. It's looking really good, and we got buds everywhere. So here's a low shot of it. This guy, he's taking up all the room. You can't even see anything. But you can see they're really doing well. We've had really good success with our peppers this year. We really have. Um, I know a lot of people are struggling. We usually buy our pepper starts, but we actually started all of our pepper starts from seed this year. And they had a growth stunt at first, and then they just started taking off. So they're doing well. Um, none of them have any 
issues and they're growing right along so um, I do wish that everybody's peppers could do the same. I know a lot of people are having trouble and uh, we really hope that everybody's peppers starts taking off because that's a really big thing that people love to grow. They're just really finicky. But hopefully they continue to grow and do well. Yeah, I'm super pumped about them. Hopefully, I would say probably in the next couple of weeks we'll be actually picking some off here. Uh, quite a few already got some actual buds on there that you can see there. So loving the peppers, fish minerals and warm water for the win. Uh, growing peppers is actually a really big grocery bill saver for us because Wyatt absolutely loves green bell peppers. We use jalapenos for everything. Um, we freeze them, we can them, we do so much with peppers. So being able to grow all these plants and produce our own peppers is going to be a huge saver on our grocery bill every week. Hopefully it produces enough for at least half the year to where we can save them. And I think that'll be really good for us. Yeah, the good thing about peppers, you can freeze them. So it's a quick, just pop them in the uh, freezer bags and throw them in, the, in there. But you can also do all kinds of different things. I'm sure Jen's gonna can some salsa because that is my go-to snack. All right, now we're headed to the bed that has had a lot of changes go on in the past week. Um, if you saw our video, we, Actually, which video was that? The video, she uh, did some cooking, and then I did some planting. So that was uh, the pole beans. So back here used to be lettuce. That is now not pole beans, bush beans that are in there. And then we got uh, our onions really looking good. So they're starting to come up real nice. Uh, they'll be ready to harvest soon. The loofah gores, check these bad boys out. They really took off. There's just something extremely amazing by watching them tie onto a trellis it is so cool just anything that ties up to anything look at that but they're very big they're growing up like little weeds this guy he's getting a little crooked so we're trying to train him to go back straight so it'll go on up but they're doing really well there also in this bed we've got three okra plants they're cowhorn okras from baker creek and we direct sowed those quite a while ago and we have three of them, so they're doing well. They're kind of slow growing. I don't know if their growth got stunted a little, maybe by all the rain, but. I think they're a little slow anyways, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, I mean, maybe. They're, they're coming, but we'll see. We'll see if it turns into anything. Also have our random pepper here. That's, that's a chocolate bell. <laughs> yeah. And, and then down here, Zach direct sowed all kinds of beans, which he talked about in our video with the broccoli. Bean Galopkos. Oh yeah, that's the, best, the one I couldn't pronounce. I see that's somebody. The best I can pronounce it. I see somebody had a birthday. Yep. Look at there. There's one. Up. Oh, there's another, oh, there's one. another one. And here's another one. Right here. Up. Oh, yep. There's another mm -hmm. one over there. Okay. So we're about to rock some bush beans. And then our red Chinese noodle beans. They're actually looking better. They got really yellow there for a little while, and a few of them still are, but for the most part. They're looking a whole lot better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we fed them some more of that fish minerals and yeah. it seemed to straighten them up. And they're gonna grow right up this trellis. And a lot of people have requested that we show how to cook them and harvest them. So we will do that when it's time. Um, I'll make sure and do a video about that. Hey, kitty cat. <laughs> Everybody's curious, her name's just Cat. Prego <laughs> Cat. <laughs> All right, Bonnie's best bed time. But before we get into those, look at these cucumbers. We're already harvesting these bad boys left and right. And it looks like we got a couple that are about ready. My shadow, sorry about that. So you can see they're growing right up. There's another one that is about ready to, ready to go. We've been pulling them off a little early just so the plants can focus on growth and uh, growing the plant itself and not worrying about the cucumbers. But this one is takes the, the champ card. He's really going. I expect him to be up this bad boy in no time. Yeah, so we've already harvested, I think, four or five cucumbers this year, which is the earliest that we've ever gotten cucumbers. So that's pretty cool. They're just champs. Champs. <laughs> and that's honestly to be at Alpha's. Yeah. I'm getting good at this. I know that name, didn't I? <laughs> uh, so the Marianas, Americanas, no. they're just, they're slow growth. I don't know why. Armenians, whatever. We tried to grow some Armenian cucumbers and they just didn't do well here. 
<laughs> I think we have uh, the one. We have one plant on our pallet trellis, which we'll show you in a second. That's doing a lot better. Look at that sunrise, though. It is pretty. <laughs> this garden. I know it's kind of hard to tell here. I'll, let me try to back up. Get so much perfect morning sun, which if you're ever growing anything, that's like your winter. You don't want it to get too much of the evening sun, even for things that say they don't need full shade or that they need full sunlight. I promise you, everything needs a little shade. So th this gets full morning sunlight all over the place. All of our raised beds get it. And then as we go up and over, this tree helps our variscas. That's not how you say that. Brassicas. And then uh, once it hits behind the sh our house, it starts shading the rest of the garden. So I'm really, I'm gonna tell you that we planned it that way, but it's really just how we've always grown here. So that's just part of it. But I wanted to say that it's, it's really nice how it's set up. So back to the Bonnie's best. Look at these bad boys taking off. So if you haven't caught our last garden walk from last week, I told you all that we had extremely bad leaf curl with these. Really bad, like we lost quite a few, I don't know, maybe three? Yeah. Three plants total that we actually had to pull up and lose and replace. All the rest, the suckers started coming up and they were very healthy. So what we did, we let the sucker take over and become the tomato plant itself and then we pruned off all the original items. So, as you can see here, we've got Bonnie's Best Tomatoes looking great and i'm proud to say let me get in here we got our first one i was shocked honestly shocked that they all came back to life and even starting to produce but it happened so there is hope i know uh, there's quite a few that have struggled with the bonnie's best and even there's another variety that i can't think of the name of but a lot of people are struggling with it with the leaf curl and stuff let the suckers try. There's no harm in trying it. Just give it a try and you might be able to save your plants too. So hopefully, hopefully that helps because I know a lot of people are dealing with that same kind of thing. Yeah, and just kind of giving you an overshot. And it's no fun to lose them. It's I mean, not. you work really hard and you grow them and start them from seed and it's really unfortunate when you have to lose them. But if you can save them in any way, it really helps your heart a little. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, and this this one has been my, our most impressive one. I mean, he's really doing good, and you can see maybe some on the bottom still have a little bit of curl, but you know, where we're really excited is all this top beautifulness. And we got flowers everywhere. So these are two that we replaced down here. These are beefsteaks, and so the plant itself is a little small because we transplanted it late, but it's already producing tomatoes as well. I think that's our biggest gardening success so far is saving these Bonnie Best plants. <laughs> I agree. I mean, they were dead, y'all. Yeah. There was, we thought we was gonna have to pull up this whole bed and figure out what to do. And then you just see that little bee sucker. You're like, hang on, man, maybe, yep. just maybe. And it worked out. So I agree with Jen, this is definitely our best success. Show them our buzzard. I'm gonna try to zoom in and see if you can see this. We have our buzzard that has actually became one of our good buddies. <laughs> see him right there? That's the tallest tree on our property. And he comes there and hangs out every morning. He usually has a partner, but I'm not sure what happened to her. Yeah, we call them lovebirds. Yeah, because they sit together all day and just watch. He looks cool now, but in the fall, when the leaves are falling off and the tree's dead, it looks really creepy. Yeah, it is very <laughs> creepy in that area. But I don't know, it's pretty cool. At least they're not uh, what are the blackhead vultures. Yeah. Those are the bad ones. They'll take things down that are just injured. And uh, he just sits and watches. Yeah, he don't bother nobody. <laughs> and now for the bed that's getting taller than Jen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is our tomato variety bed. So we probably have six or seven different varieties in here. And we're just gonna do all kinds of things with them. We're excited about it. We usually just grow the like the slicer tomatoes or the canner tomatoes. So this is kind of a first for us. And it's doing well. So next year we might be getting a little more crazy and do like some of those Brad's Atomic Grapes or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I think so. But yeah, and, uh, we got three peppers in there. Yeah, and we have three peppers in here. One of which is sitting off a blossom. So that's super cool. Yeah, look at there. And that Jimmy Nardello over there is big. Yeah, he's huge. He's, he's trying the to, biggest pepper. He's trying to keep up with the tomatoes. 
That's one pepper that we did not have any issues with is the Jimmy Nardello. That's true. So if you are struggling with peppers and say you want to start over or think about it for next year, try the Jimmy Nardello because they're easy. They're not yep. very picky. They do like to stay warm when they're trying to germinate. But overall, they're just a different pepper. They are. Not finicky. They're just easy. They're happy and... And they were, the, they were the first to germinate yeah. out of all of them. So if you all know peppers are hard to germinate, they just, they take forever to germinate. That Those, the Jimmy Nardellas popped up first, they grew the best and they're still growing the best. So yeah, yeah, highly recommended. So we've got some Aunt Ruby's German Green Tomatoes. That's this one. And this is a white cherry. So we have tomatoes everywhere. Very excited about those. I don't think those will ever make it into the house. I think we'll probably eat them yeah. all out here. Yeah, I know. Everybody's talking about the, uh, what, the ground cherries? Yeah. I think this is going to be our ground cherry, the <laughs> white cherries. And I think it's so cool when you have uh, this style that's uh, vining out like this, how the, it starts in the back with the bee because it's the, basically the first thing that gets the food. And then really how they have to share and at the end is going to be your smallest. But I just think that's neat how they grow. And we've also got some Romas over there. Some Roma yep, tomatoes. very next plant. These are cool. I just love kind of like the teardrop that they're growing, but we got them everywhere. Um, lots of tomato white cherries. We've also got some brandy wines. Yep, over that's there. right here. Some brandy wine right there. I think it's a black brandy wine. Yeah. More tomato white cherries here. We have so many of those. I know the everything's taking over so much. It's hard to get everything, but we've got another Aunt Ruby's German green tomato over here, which is gigantic. It's really becoming a tree. This is a pink ox heart. Yeah, those are going to be cool. Yep. And one guy down. Like we always say, we always show you the good, the bad, and the ugly. I have no idea what happened to this plant, but it went down. Yep. It might be because it's here next to the comfrey, honestly. This comfrey is getting huge. We're going to have to start clipping and harvesting that. I'm mm. going to do it on it. A lot of people have told me it's not ideal in a raised bed, and I know that, but when you don't have as much room as you want to and you're just trying to maximize your space that's where it got put because it had to go in somewhere so however i did hear heirloom which is the channel that we got these from heirloom permaculture they said that the comfrey leaves are great fertilizers for tomato yeah so maybe we can use something like that we just have to take it off look at this german green that's these aunt ruby german greens are going to be really pretty i'm really excited about those two gosh we got tomatoes everywhere there's more brandy wines coming in. I'll tell you one thing too, I noticed these brandy wines are a little prone to leaf curl, but it hasn't been anything like the uh, Bonnie's Best. That's another German green. Oop, let me get you there. These pink ox hearts and the uh, um, Romas, I love this, the style of this tomato. So pretty. More German greens. And I think that's about it for this bad boy. There is a lot of stuff happening. So be ready for next week on that one. There he goes. He had a little, little one bugging. Got him away. The tea garden is doing well, um, except the fenugreek. I don't know anything about fenugreek. If y'all have any tips or ideas, and it may be fine. I really just, I don't know. It's kind of- Don't look right. Yeah, it don't look right, so. Let me know. I don't know. Uh, we've got some hyssop here that's doing really good. I'm going to start probably harvesting that soon along with a few weeds. Y'all about to get all kinds of tea videos in the future. Yep. Dandelion's taking over. Here's my lavender. It's doing good. It's still slower than the rest, but it's coming up. Yeah, it is. I mean, every time we do this, it gets bigger. Yep. Um, I did want to say a few things about that. I talked about it a little on our live last night but a lot of people have struggled with getting lavender and chamomile started so i started these all from seed and the best advice i have for that is start from seed don't direct sow it because the seeds are literally microscopic i mean it's it's impossible to even see them so unless you just want to throw them in a whole bed and see what comes up it's just kind of hard and they like to be warm so i started all of these tea garden which is the lavender and the chamomile too in the greenhouse so they had warmth and they were in those little plastic little black tray things the little cups so 
so they weren't crowded you know they had their own little secure space and they all germinated so um, if you have struggled with them maybe try that and see if that'll work and hopefully it does <laughs> <laughs> but these are the marigolds they're blooming they're doing good i can start harvesting those soon too you passing by my favorite one yep i've got my thyme and my variegated sage and look at this oregano. variegated sage it's purple i'm addicted to purple and white things in the garden i love it here's my licorice basil it's That's doing really well too. as you can see yeah it tastes great here's another one all my chamomile is doing good. I've got four starts that I grew from seed. And I love them, they're so fuzzy. My lemon balm, which is probably my new favorite thing to put in drinks, is doing awesome. I've got two of those. All my dandelions, look at these guys, they're getting huge. So I'm gonna start harvesting some greens soon because they're just taking over yeah they're taking over so we're gonna start harvesting the greens and letting the plant mature a little bit more and then I've got lemon mint which is another small one I've got two of them that are just small um, I don't know we'll see they might maybe the dandelions are overshadowing them and then here's my basil which needs to be harvested and dried <laughs> so tea garden is rocking it's going to keep you busy yeah, harvesting and doing all this stuff because it's just not having any issues. It's huge. So. But it's so pretty. I mean, yeah. it's just really bushing out and having some really beautiful stuff in there. It's definitely one of the best. All right, next, bush bean and beet bed. So the bush beans were under attack uh, this past week, and it looks like they still are. So this firewood bundle we got here, it was infested with ants. And we found out the hard way. So they got behind this bark and just made their colony up in here. Uh, so if you do this, I don't know if I would recommend uh, just taking off the bark uh, so they don't have anything to hide behind. Um, but definitely beware if you have anything with bark. So they were eating none of these plants. The Nemo though seems to work. I see a bunch of dead ones and some live ones on there. But we're gonna put some more Nemo on it uh, this evening. You don't wanna do it during the day. It can sunburn because it is an oil and water mixture. Uh, but they're looking good, and I smell it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I can't stand the smell. Jen likes I it. I love it. It smells like China Buffet. <laughs> <laughs> China Buffet. <laughs> so our beets are still doing really well. And you can see down here, we're starting to get some action. So we'll hopefully be harvesting them soon. Yeah, they're an early summer harvest, so we're going to start getting them here soon. Let's see if I can get you another shot. I don't think so. But they're starting to show themselves, so we're getting very close. Really need to get on them bush beans. I thought we took care of the ants. Gosh darn it. Broccoli needs to come out. To be honest, we just haven't gotten to it. Yeah. But I'm still eating it. <laughs> <laughs> I still love coming out here and picking these off and eating the leaves and eating everything. So we're still kind of munching on it, which is why I hate to take it out, but it's still doing okay. It's just they're starting to bolt a little but it's and, not bitter yet and they're getting attacked yeah they are getting attacked but other than that this bed is doing good we have some things popping up over here i do believe so this is the one i did the carrots and what kind of bean because when we watched the video back that we did i said a tenderloin bean it's tender at bush bean tender at so we've had excuse me broccoli <laughs> eating broccoli We've had almost 100% germination rate. You can see them coming up everywhere. They're doing good. They're just gonna bush out. Uh, that. Maybe. Nope, not there. Ooh, ants though. Yeah, we gotta get take care of this ant problem. Yeah. Um, let's see. Not seeing many on this side. But then we also planted carrots here. I don't think I see any just yet coming up. But these are those, uh, heat tolerant carrots so that's kind of exciting we'll see how they do get a shot of the cat up here y'all just doing her own thing she's crazy she is crazy now this used to be the pallet trellis that had peas on it so we harvested the peas i've told you all that 
they didn't vine as well as they should have because I didn't get the chicken wire on it in time. So make sure you're doing that if you do that for the fall. But we planted those white small cucumbers that are really good for pickling. They have an extremely quick production life and uh, the plant itself only gets about three foot tall, which is the same height as this pallet. So, there are uh, many white cucumbers from Baker Creek. There you go. She knows the more precise stuff. <laughs> so, uh, these are mini whites. They've germinated on both sides already, which is awesome and fast, but cucumbers are pretty quick, anyways, in that aspect. Mm. What? <laughs> so, we had to take a quick break. What happened to you, babe? You almost see the caterpillar? Almost. It was close. It was in the broccoli. Oh my goodness. That's <laughs> why so you should wash it first. That's right. All right, Rusty's on the job now. Oh, that was funny, y'all. So back to the mini white cucumbers. Uh, they're already germinated, and so we'll just help them up this uh, pallet trellis once they get bigger. Here's the other side. So it looks like only one so far has germinated over here. But they'll grow right up, and I'm hoping they like meet each other at the top of the pallet and we will be good to go there. We got a bee. Alright, and these are the other bee at Alphas. They're doing well. There's a bee in there. Love yeah, bees, buddy. But I'm a little scared of it so I don't want to touch it. Oh, he ain't gonna bother you. Ain't Where's nice. it at? He's in there. Oh, he just flew away. Yeah. We scared him. Gosh, hopefully you get the pollination done before we bothered him. <laughs> but you can see this is the same thing we're gonna do with these. So I these we have planter boxes in, which I made and are really working out well. Uh, but we got three plants. They were spaced 18 inches apart each. And so they're growing nicely up the pallet trellis. I am tying them as we go just to train them up. Um, but they're already attaching, so everything's good there. Um, and these, we didn't do anything on the backside. So since this is gonna be a bigger one, I'm actually planning on that they come up and just hang over. And I think it'll work. And so here's the other one. One guy down, he got ate up. That's the Armenian. Armenian, uh, but uh, he's trying to looks like make a comeback. He's just gonna be real slow. See, he's already attached to it. So he's trying. Here's, that one actually looks like an Armenian. Look at it. It could be. Some of my plant markers got lost. It says it's a beat alpha. Yeah. Looks like an Armenian though. This one I know is Armenian. And you can see they are a different style. Uh, but they're pretty cool. So this one is doing good. These two right here. And I think that is our main. I think we just, like you said, labeled it wrong. Because the cucumbers look the same. So they're doing just as well. Going up and over the pallet trellises. Getting super tall. And starting to be super productive. And if you all heard a little whining. It's new puppy over in front yard. I don't know if I can get him. Get her. There she goes. For being so early in the morning, it's getting hot. That 45 degree weather did not hold on very long, so it's getting warm. But that is it. That's all of our plants that we have going on right now. Uh, but Jim wanted to show you all one more thing because she likes uh, <laughs> showing water stuff that also grows and kid stuff. Yeah, so we went to Aldi's last weekend and- Best store ever. Yes. I love Aldi's. They always have all kinds of cool stuff that's cheap and fun. So we got this slip inside. It was $12.99 at Aldi's. So check out your local Aldi's and see if they have the same thing. So now the kids have the pool and all their toys and their slip and slide. And they're loving it. It's pretty fun. It's on a little slope here. So they yep. just go right down it and have a good time with it. This is a really good shot of our whole backyard over here. Yeah. You can see that's compost bins, gate to the back, greenhouse, till garden, all of our raised beds, and then the kids section. Pretty cool. And this is not a paid advertisement for Aldi's. <laughs> we just really love Aldi's and we got that while he's at the grocery store. I hope y'all have enjoyed this garden walk. Man, it has been a busy week for us just doing everything in this garden, trying to keep up with its pace. Yeah, and it's we're excited to show it to you in the morning. Mm -hmm. You guys usually see it in the evening, yep. but the morning is beautiful. So we hope you enjoyed that. And don't forget to check out Homestead and Hustle living on feed and seed they're in texas check out their channel you will absolutely love it they've got so much stuff on there and they're just continuing to pump it out so mm -hmm. definitely check them out and hopefully you love them as much as we do yeah absolutely I, they have an awesome channel name and an awesome motto yeah. i love both of them so yeah. that's really cool but 
Uh, yeah, I think that's it for the day. We got some surprise visitors coming uh, later to hang out because I'm on vacation. So make sure to watch for tomorrow. We'll have a little bit of that. I'm not exactly sure what we're going to show you all project wise, but we have a few things in the works. So stand by for that. Um, other than that, I think that's all I got today. I hope you all are not getting flooded because we were. Yeah. It's finally pretty. We've had rain for the past two weeks. And so also trying to keep all the things alive there. Cold temperatures, you know, this incredibly cool summer we're having here um, is just insane. So uh, trying to keep the garden alive around here. I hope y'all are having the same successes and more successes than failures going on right now. Yeah. <laughs> we love y'all and we will talk to you soon. All right, y'all. Bye.